you know, these, these are our first tentative steps to try out this technology. But it opens doors, I think, to a lot of benefits in a lot of different areas, not just spill response. There are infrared packages that can be flown under this little helicopter that we want to try out and see if it improves the efficiency and the effectiveness of pipeline inspections or uh, pipeline insulation inspections, leak detection. And so there's, there's, there's a lot of uh, knock-on effects, if you will, as we get more and more familiar with this technology. And I think it opens doors to using this technology to make our operations, as well as our non-standard operations like spill response, more effective, more safe. And, uh, and, and provide the data that people deserve to have. I think the next step is to take this and actually work it off of a boat and stay in the water the whole time. Mm -hmm. So you can do the same thing we're doing today, but never touch the beach. So you would never, if it's a critical habitat or, or, a, or, a, or a hazardous environment, you could stay away from it and you could work off, of a, off the safety of the shore, you know, a quarter mile out to sea and you could watch it from there. Same thing he's doing right now as you come, what, what is he, <laughs> eight feet in the air, 10 feet in the air, you could do that from a quarter mile away from a boat. And imagine being able to go down the beach, you know, at a running pace or faster, and never even have to touch shore and t touch foot on the shore. Our next step is to give it a real-time uh, uh, voiceover input. That's the next step. So just like our camera surveys based on a helicopter, a boat with the machine can run along the beach with a pair of binoculars, and the instrument can take uh, geo-referenced real-time information with a narration and stream it right back to town on the spot, probably within minutes. This is the leading edge of a new sort of era of investigation. Um, the battery life is going to get better, the flying times are going to get better, the resolution of our screens are going to get better. So just we're just getting our feet wet here and it's quite an exciting piece of gear, particularly if the ground is, uh, is in a hazmat situation or you have nasty footing or any kind of liability where personnel We'd probably think twice about going in there. Uh, oil spills oftentimes are very difficult places to develop new technology, but we certainly identified it as having great promise for that. And so taking that uh, necessity, we, we saw this as, as, as a real opportunity to improve how we do business in so many ways and continuously improve as, you know, like I said, we've been doing this since 1968, since the first National Contingency Plan. We've we need to just continuously move forward and continuously use the, the tools that are available to us to make things better. It goes hand in hand. I mean, if you're using the best of technology, you're improving on what you're trying to do. You're improving on what you're trying to do for oil spill cleanup and response and surveillance. So it goes hand in hand. Best available technology, continuous improvement. It's a continuous loop.